Okay, in this video, I am going to work the practice quiz for chapters 9 and 10. It's kind of long. It'll probably take me a while. So, um, yeah. So, good thing it's a video. You can fast forward. If you already know how to do some, yeah, you get the idea. Okay, so the first one, the inverse function of this thing. So, let's get started. Um, we, so, what you do, again, for inverse functions is you solve for x as a function of y. So... This is number one, the practice quiz. We have y is equal to three times the square root of four minus x minus six. We want x as a function of y, and then it's kind of nice to switch the x's and y's again because it's nice to write it as a function of x because normally we just like to see functions of x's and we call it the inverse. So you'll see what I mean. Okay, we want to solve for x. Let's see, there's one square root. We want to get the square root by itself. Let's put the minus 6 over here and make it plus 6. So we have y plus 6 equals 3 square roots of 4 minus x. Um, now we square both sides. Don't forget to square the 3. A lot of people keep forgetting to square the 3 there on the, on the you know, quizzes and stuff. So don't forget that. Um, we square this side. We get y squared plus 2 times the multiply together, which is 12y plus that one squared plus 36 equals 9, right? Square that. And square this gets rid of the square root, so it's 4 minus x. Um, again, we want x as a function of y. We want to solve for x. So let me rewrite this then. So y squared plus 12y plus 36 equals 36. Whoa, that's nice, minus 9x. Wow, really? Gosh, that's really nice. It worked out that way. 9 times 4. Yeah, it must be. The 36 is going to cancel. Let's subtract 36 from both sides. That's really nice. All we have left is negative 9x here. So let's divide both sides by negative 9. And then we have x, because I'm going to write this. It's nice to put the x on the left, right? So I'm just going to switch the two sides around. And I'm going to divide by negative 9. So divide that by negative 9, we just have an x left. That means all this stuff divided by negative 9. So that's y squared plus 12y divided by negative 9. Um, yeah, that is our inverse function. Now, it's nice to write it like this. We can call that as a function of x. So f negative 1 of x. So this is f of x. Okay, so this here is f of x. Let me put my one further over so I can write that. If this is our function of x, this is our inverse function of x. And it's just, again, as x, it's this with x's in it. So it's x squared plus 12x divided by negative 9. And you can make it negative x squared minus 12x divided by positive 9. Yeah, you know, there's only one negative sign here. Maybe that's better. I don't know. Okay, that's our inverse function. You don't have to do this step. You could leave it like this and have it as a function of y. But it's nice to have our function of x and our inverse function of x. I don't know. It's, it's okay to do that. Now, what is the domain of f of x? What is the domain of this function? Okay, so let's look at this function here. What are the allowable values? Well, remember, the only problem with the domain is unless someone tells you something otherwise, like you're given it, is you can't have the square root of negative number. We're not going to do i square root of negative 1 and stuff. And we can't divide by 0. Those are the two things we look for. Well, we got a square root here. So let's see, we can't make this negative, so x can't be bigger than 4, right? x can be 4, because then it's squared to 0 is 0. That's okay. It can't be greater than 4. So what you can do is you do it like this. You say, so the domain of f of x, the domain of f of x, and this is part a or something, so part a, would be, you can write it like this. Put these kind of brackets. You say x can be anything, but x cannot be greater than, wait, no, that's not the best way to do it. That's if x can't be a certain number. Let's just do the interval notation here. So x can't be greater than 4. So x can go all the way to negative infinity up to 4. And we put a solid bracket there, this square bracket there, because it can be 4. You can't get to negative infinity, so we use the parenthesis, but we can put that bracket there. So x can be as negative as we want. Can't be 4. Okay, now what is the range? To figure out the range, we put the extreme values in of these guys. Okay, we see what it can be. So let's see. When x is 0, 
when, I'm sorry, when x is 4, this is 0. 4 minus 4 is 0. 3 times that is 0. And we get negative 6. And when x is smaller than that, this becomes bigger. And when x goes to negative infinity, this becomes like the square root of infinity. So this can get infinitely big. This can get infinitely big, but the smallest it can be is 0. So it's negative 6. So the range is, it can be negative 6, and it could go to infinity. Because again, when x is like, imagine x is a negative a million, then that's square root of about a million, which is 3 times the square root of a million minus 6. So we can make that as big as we want. We can make it all the way to infinity, but we can't get smaller than negative 6. Yes, okay. Now, here's the nice thing. For Right, for inverse functions, since what we're doing is switching the x and the y, right, we're just switching the x and the y, you just switch to the domain and ranges, so it's exactly the same. So C, I think I say the domain of the inverse function. C, you just write this, so it's just negative 6 to infinity. And D, the range of the inverse function is the domain of the function, so it's negative infinity 4. Make sure you don't get those mixed up, and make sure that's a bracket. Make sure you do that correctly. You don't accidentally put this one here or something. The range of this one is the domain. The domain of that one is the range. They just swap because we're swapping x and y's. So we're swapping domains and ranges. All right. That is one where you have a square root. And so the domain, we can't have a square root of a negative number. Number two is we have the dividing by zero problem. Okay. So let's look at number two now. I'm going to erase all this. Okay, so number two says uh, f of x is 4 over x minus 6. So number two, now we have our function, which we'll call y, is 4 over x minus 6. Okay, here is where the domain is easy. The domain can't be 6, right? The x can't be 6. It can be anything but 6. So this is where, let's just do that right off the bat. So the domain, we'll say, can be any x we want, but x cannot be 6. Okay, that's one way to do it. We could also say the domain goes from negative infinity to 6, but does not include 6, and from 6 to infinity, and make sure there are parentheses everywhere, because you can't include infinity, and you can't include 6. So you could do it that way or this way, or you could do the greater than or equals, but I find those, I always get my signs pointed the wrong way, and that's just, I wouldn't do that. So, but you could, it's not wrong or anything. And why do I have C, E, F, G, H? That should be A, B, C, well, whatever, it doesn't matter. Okay, now, let's, well, since we're at it, let's look at the range. So the range, so let's see. Um, what can this not be? Um, the only way to get this to be zero, this is where if you're dividing by something, if, the, the trick is to get zero. How do you get zero with so if you have an x in the bottom? The only way to make this zero is for x to be infinity, because then it's an infinitely small fraction. It's you know four divided by infinity, four quadrillionths, just practice like nothing, right? That's really small. But we can't get to infinity, so we can't get to zero. So we cannot be zero. This thing cannot be zero. So can it be anything else? Can it be really big numbers, okay? Or really small numbers? Now we know, let's see, how could this be? This could be a really small number if x is really big. If x is like a million, that's like four millionths. It could be a really small negative number if x is negative big, negative a million, it'd be four negative millions. So we can have really small negative numbers, really small positive numbers, just can't get to zero. And how about big, can they go to infinity? Um, when x is really small, let's say x is, no, let's say, let's say x is 0 0.0006.0001 minus 6, that's 4 divided by 0 0.001, which is like 40,000. That's a big number. And if it was 6.00 more zeros, we can make this as big as we want. Or we can make it the other way. We can make it as, as big negative as we want. We can put 5.999999, the more nines the better. 
And that would be like negative 0.00001 in the bottom. 4 divided by negative 0.0001 is like negative 40,000 and 40 million or 40 quadrillion. So we can make it as big a negative number or as big a positive number as we want by making this number close to 6, either a little bit under or a little bit over. So our range then, the only thing we can't have is 0. So the range would be... We can have all of y. Oh, and the range should be y. I think I said that before. I put an x for the range. Oops. So ignore that. Um, the range, so I think I did that wrong in the last one. So just be careful of that. Uh, yeah, the range would be, usually you talk about the y values, right? Yes. So y can be anything you want, but it can't be 0. So y cannot be 0. So again, the last problem, I think I put an x here by mistake. Um, it's because when you're doing whatever. So, okay. Now, when we're doing the inverse function, those are switched, right? So I'm not just, they're the same thing, but switched. This is the domain of the inverse function. This is the range of the inverse function. So let's figure out the inverse function. This is a lot easier for this one. Um, no square roots. So we have y is equal to 4 over x minus 6. Now, it always works. This is a good trick to have where you can, if we want the x on the top, because we want x as a function of y, we want to solve for x, we can put the y over here and put the x minus 6 there. We can just swap them. If you just have a simple equation like this, you have one in the bottom, one in the top, you can just swap them. Now you can take your time and do multiply both sides by x minus 6, divide both sides by y. You get the same thing. And once you do that enough, you realize, oh, you just swap them. So we have x minus 6 is equal to 4 over y. Add 6 to both sides, x is equal to 4 over y plus 6. I think that's right, minus 6 plus 6, yep. And then we can switch it so we can say the negative function, the inverse function of x, and then we just make the y into an x is 4 over x plus 6. Again, you don't need to do that step or write as x, but I think it's kind of nice. It's the, this is f of x, this is f negative 1, or inverse function of x. Now again, Here's the deal. You can always check to see if you did it right. If we take the inverse function of the function, f negative 1 of f of x, we should get x out. Okay, this is a way to check your work. It's a lot of work. Just do the algebra right. That's what I do. But still, if you wanted to, right, which means we take this function, okay, so we go 4 over x, but everywhere there's an x, we plug in f of x. Because everywhere, you take f negative 1 of x, everywhere there's an x, you plug in f of x. So you go 4 over all that. So 4 over, 4 over x minus 6. Okay, so 4 over x plus 6. That's this. Let's see if it equals x. The 4 over 4 cancels. Bottom to bottom means it's in the top. So this is like x minus 6. 4s cancel. That makes it a 1. Bottom of the bottom means it's in the top, so it's x minus 6 plus 6, which is x. So it works, so we know we did it right. Okay, cool. That's the front side. Ah, we have a lot to do. This is so long. Ah, okay, that's okay. We can do it. We can do it. Um, now it's like a lot of algebra problems. Good stuff. Really tricky. Um, I think it seems like this class, you guys are pretty good at this stuff. Um, so... Yeah, but it's good stuff to become an expert at, which is the whole point here. Um, okay, common denominators. Okay, so we have, this is just, again, just practice doing these things. You can't have too much practice. Um, so we have 2 over a squared plus 3 uh, minus 3 over ab. Minus 3 over ab plus 4 over b squared. Uh, let's see, These, we don't have to have the smallest common denominator. We can always simplify later, but it's nice to get the simplest one, the, the simplest one. We don't have to, but it's nice. So this has an a squared. That only has a b squared. This has an ab. So it looks like we got to have an a squared, b squared, because an a squared, b squared would work for all of them. Okay, so put an a squared, b squared in the bottom. And I'm going to do it. Yeah, yeah, we'll do it this way. Uh, this one we had to multiply by b squared, so it's 2b squared in the top. Minus, this one we had to multiply by ab in the bottom, so it's minus 3ab in the top, over a squared, b squared. 
And this one we have to multiply by a squared, so it's 4a squared on the top. a squared, b squared. And then always make sure you did it right. So let's cancel them and see if you get the original equation. Uh, the a squareds cancel. We have 4 over b squared. a, b cancels out one of each. So we have 3 minus 3 over a, b. b squareds cancel 2 over a squared. Okay, yep, yeah, did it right. Um, and now we just put the tops together. So it's 2b squared minus 3ab plus 4a squared divided by a squared b squared. If you get the simplest common denominator, you shouldn't be able to simplify it. It should automatically be about as simple as you can get. Okay, that's number three. Number four is more algebra practice. This just gets pretty tricky here. Simplify cube root of 128a to the fourth. Cube root of 128a to the fourth. Okay, now cube root means the one third power. So let's rewrite that. So that's 128a to the fourth to the one third. Um, let's see. We want to write this as simplified as possible. Um, 128, what's 128 equal to? Can we take a cube root out of that? Uh, so that would be, hmm. So 128 is, let's see, that's two times, let's do this, I can do this over here. 128 is two times 64, right? 64 is eight times eight, so two times eight times eight. Uh, eight times eight, that's, so that's two times, eight times eight is four times two, or two times four, times two times four. Oh, look, we have three fours in there. So that's four, no, three twos, three twos, yeah. That means we have two to the third power, two to the third power, and we have four to the second power. So 128 is the same as two to the third times four squared. So let's rewrite this as two to the third times four squared times, and I'm gonna do this, times, Uh, should we do this times a to the, ah, we'll just leave it a to the fourth, a to the fourth. Okay, now we have this to the one-third power. So that means we have, we can multiply the power times each of these exponents. So let's do that. So one-third times three is two. One-third, sorry, <laughs> yeah, it's just two. That's two to the one. One third of three is one, times four, one third of two is two thirds, times a times a to the four thirds. Well, that's just a two. We might as well just leave that there. We can't cube root of four, we can't simplify. So this is just two times four to the two thirds times a, maybe put a dot there, so it's times a, but we, we know it's times there, I don't know, a to the four thirds. That's one way to write that as simplified as possible. Um, just all with nice denominators. This would be, yeah. That's a little bit simpler than this, right? Um, there's other ways to write it, but I think that's, that's pretty good. Um, we could write this as, we could write this as this cube root of four squared. So we could put the cube root of four squared, which is 16, right? Because cube root of four squared times the cube root, which is already of a to the fourth. So cube root of a to the fourth. We could just leave it like that. Basically, we'll leave a to the fourth in there and take out the two if we want. Um, and really, any of those would be okay. This one or that one. Yeah, that's really they're both pretty much the same. So I'll take either one of those. So we could leave it like this with the fractional exponents, or we could just keep it in the cube root and basically take a two out because two times two times two is eight. Eight times 16 is 128. So we're just taking two times two times two out. That, that would be fine. Okay, let's write this as three to a power now. This one's especially fun. Uh, number five, we have three to the eighth times 27 to the third, three to the eighth times 27 to the third, times nine to the fourth. Okay, we want to write this as three to a single power. Well, this one's already there. 
3 to the 8 times 27 is 3 to the third power to the third. All right, 27 itself is 3 times 3 times 3. I chose easy ones, so you know you can kind of do it in your head. Um, to the third, right? Got to keep that third there. And 9 is 3 squared. 9, to, that's to the fourth. We got to keep this on the outside. 9 is 3 squared. Powers of powers multiply. 3 to the 8 times 3 times 3, 3 to the 9th times 4 times 2 times 3 to the 8th. Now, bases, you add. Power to power, you multiply. But same base, we add exponents. So finally, that's what, 16 plus 9 is 25. So 3 to the 25th is our answer. It's a lot simpler, right? 3 to the 25th is way better than this. Like, what's up? 3 to the 25th? Oh, okay, I can, I can imagine that. Okay, number 6. More algebra practice. Number six is this crazy thing we're supposed to simplify. So we have x to the negative five y cubed z to the tenth to the negative three fifths. Okay, first thing is you just multiply each one of these, the exponent, right, power to power. Each one you multiply by negative three fifths. So x, this so I'm just gonna sh do it this way and make it easier. Right? So this is negative five, x to negative five times negative three fifths. Then y to the three times negative three fifths. And then z to the 10 times negative three fifths, negative three fifths. Okay, fives cancel, negatives cancel, that's just x cubed. Um, that would be negative nine over five, so y to the negative nine over five, that's just, there's nothing nice to do about that, it's just ugly, it doesn't cancel anything. And then our z cancels a little bit, five, 10 divided by five is two, so that's z to the negative six. Okay, um, it's nice to write this now when it says simplify, you, you could leave it like that, but it's kind of nice to put negative exponents in the bottom. It just works better for our brains. So I would say the best way to write this is x cubed in the top, and then negative 9 fifths means y to the 9 fifths in the bottom times z to the sixth. That just kind of makes, you know, negative exponents. I mean, it's, it's right, and it's kind of simple, right? It's, don't have to have this big dividing line and everything. But, um, I, I would take that on the test, but, but that's just a nicer way to write it. So, okay, number seven, more practice here. Again, this is all just applying the rules that the exponent rules and stuff, and negatives on the x on the denominator, and it, but it's tricky. Okay, we have one x to the ninth to the Four. So 4x to the 9, that's a 4. That's not, that's not a four. Square root of x to the negative 3 in the bottom. x to the negative 3. Let me change that to 4. Okay. Roots are fractional exponents. So um, that is to the 1 fourth power. So on the top, we have x to the 9th to the 1 fourth. On the bottom, we have x to the negative 3 to the one-half, right? So regular square root is one-half power. Four means there's one-fourth power. Now we just multiply powers. That's nine divided by four. There's no, nothing nice we can do about that. Um, this is nothing nice there. X to the negative three-halves. Um, when you have the same base, you subtract powers. So that's equal to X to the nine fourths minus three halves. Okay, now we have a fraction problem. That's six fourths, right? Minus, oh, sorry, sorry. Top minus the bottom exponent. It's minus negative three halves. So minus negative three halves. Boy, that would have been bad. Uh, negative three halves is the same as six fourths. So that's actually plus. Nine fourths plus six fourths. So that would be x to the 9 plus 6 is 15, to the 15 fourths. 
and uh, you can just leave it like that. X to the 15 fourths. Okay, and then you make sure you did that right. So 9 fourths minus negative. It's always the top one minus the bottom one, as long as it's the same base, but it's still X there. Yeah, I think that works. X to 15 fourths. That's a lot simpler, right? Okay, ah, number eight. More practice with this. Ah, this is crazy stuff. Okay, number eight, we have these A's going on here. We have A to the negative two, square root of A to the negative one. Again, this is all just giving you lots of practice dealing with all the rules here. Is in calculus especially, this comes up a lot. You deal a lot with exponents and negative exponents and fractions. We're taking derivatives and stuff. You just really got to have this down. So I'm just giving you all kinds of horrible things here to figure this out. Okay, so this is the only tricky one here. We want to write that as an exponent. So that's a to the one half to the negative one. Um, a to the one half to the negative one divided by a to the three halves. Okay, that is negative one half. You multiply, power to power you multiply. So that would be a to the negative two, a to the negative one half divided by a to the three halves. Okay, power times same base infinity as you add, negative two plus one halves. That's we could negative two point five. Let's 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 write it as a fraction. Negative two minus one half is negative two and a half, which is this is negative four halves, negative five halves. A to the negative five halves. Two, yep, that's right. Divided by a to the three halves. Now you subtract negative five halves minus three halves. So that would be negative five minus three is negative eight. A to the negative eight halves. Oh, look, that simplifies. That's just negative four. So that's a to the negative four. Now you can leave it as a to the negative four, but come on, that just means one over a to the four. So I would write it as one over a to the four. So that whole thing, this whole garbage there, is just 1 over a to the 4th, or a to the negative 4, which again, I would mark that wrong in the test, but 1 over a to the 4th is simpler. All right, um, number 9. Did I say this video was going to be long? I think I did. It's okay. Fast forward. Skip through. Take your time. Okay, number 9. What is nonsense do we have here? Uh, 81 to the 3 fourths. I say to do this without a calculator because we can simplify this without a calculator. Okay, um, I chose 81 on purpose here. Okay, I did. I do this, and we don't want to use a calculator. So this we can write as 81 to the one fourth cubed, right? Because three times one fourth is three fourths, and that's the fourth root of 81. What number times itself four times equals 81? Well, I chose 81 on purpose. Three times three times three times three. That's nine times nine is 81. So 81 to the one fourth is just three. So this is like three cubed. Three times three is nine times three is 27. So the answer is 27. So again, you do not need a calculator on a test. I'm going to give you one like this in the regular quiz. I want to see your steps here. Otherwise, I'll think you just did in a calculator or something. I want you to be able to work through that and, you know, and show that you can get the answer by just using the exponent rules. Okay. Um, now, this next one, I tell you, use a calculator because this is tricky. Um, so number 10, write the two decimal places. I did it already, so check and make sure you can do this. You should get 2.65. Okay, the answer is 2.65. So plug that into your calculator. Make sure you can use your calculator correctly. So figure it out. Everyone's different. Calculator's different, but 2.65. Okay, um, number 11. Annie wants to build a piano with only eight notes per octave. Okay, normally there's 12, right? There's 12 steps. Um, we're going to do it only eight, so that's fine. With notes from 8H, so A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Yep, that works. So no sharps, just pure whole notes, just pure letters, no like A sharp and... C sharp and everything. Um, and she wants to set the middle A at 500 hertz for some reason. So the first A is at 500 hertz. What is the frequency of the first E note above middle A? So let's see, this is number 11. So we have uh, A, B, C, D, E. So this is 500. And so we got to multiply it 
four times, once to get B, once to get C, once to get D, once to get E, by, let's see. Uh, okay, so here's the idea, right? We talked about this in class before. But a full octave is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and then it goes back to the new A. The new A would be 1,000 hertz. Okay, that's our, our new A. It's always double. An octave is always double the frequency. So if A is 500, the next A would be 1,000. Um, so there's eight steps. And to make this double, to get all the way here to eight steps, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. To make that double, we got to multiply by two to the one eighth eight times. Because if we do that, if we do that eight times, that's two to the one eighth eight times, we get two. It doubles it. So if we multiply by two to the one eighth eight times, we just get two out of it. Now to get to the E, which I think is just what we want here, right? To the E, we multiply it one, two, three, four times. So we multiply by two to the one eighth four times. Or you could just go by two to the one eighth four times, do that, which is two to the four eighths, which is two to the one half, which is the square root of two. So all I gotta do is take 500 and multiply it by the square root of two. Okay, that's pretty easy. So do that. So two square root times, and then keep like, you know, reasonable number of decimal, how many decimal places. I should say how many decimal places. But I get 707.1, that's good enough. So 707.1 hertz. That would be the frequency of this thing here, 707.1. Now you could go two to the one eighth and then just do it four times. It's the same thing. So two to the one eighth, and make sure you do that right in your calculator, is 1.0905. Keep lots of decimal places. Two to the one eighth is 1.0905. The next one is a zero, Zen 077, something like that. Um, keep lots of decimal places because it can make a big difference. You start multiplying many, many times. So I could have done this four times. I could have multiplied by that number, multiplied again, multiplied again, multiplied again, and I should have gotten 707.1 again if I kept plenty of decimal places for that. But that's the same as multiplying by a square root of two. So I'll do that. Okay, what is the next highest A? Did that one for you. The next highest A is 1,000. If this is 500, the next highest, if I said next lowest A, that'd be good for me to do on the quiz. Write something different. It'd be 250, and then 125, and then whatever half of that is. And the next one here is 2,000, and whatever that is. Okay, cool. All right, finally, number 12 is the modeling one. Um, or just an exponential. It's not really modeling exactly yet, but an exponential one of yeast growing in populations. Um, we'll get to do more of these in the next chapters. You guys will be experts in population growth and exponential growth. So a poison yeast population is given by, and it's nice that Y stands for yeast, right? Where this works well. So the number of yeast cells is 654 E to the negative 0.54 T, 0.54 T. Um, T is in hours, so we're doing a time in hours here. Um, now, if this is negative, that means that it's going to be shrinking. Um, the yeast population is going to go down. That's why it's a poisoned yeast population. It's going to get smaller because this means it's 1 over E to this. As T gets bigger, this is going to get to be a bigger number on the bottom, which means it's going to get smaller. The denominator gets bigger and bigger. The number gets smaller. Okay, at T equals 0, T equals 0, this is E to the 0, which is 1. We have 654. That number tells you at time equals zero. So obviously A is super easy. You just write 654, you don't have to do any math. Just say T is zero, E is zero as well. How many will it be in four hours? This is copy the problem. So in four hours, you have 654 E to the negative 0.54 times, let's say four hours, times four. So you just have to be able to put E to the negative 0.54 times four in your calculator, which is you know surprisingly tricky. Um, so let me see if I can do it here. So first I'm gonna go, on my calculator it kind of works backwards, so I'm gonna go four times 0.54. I get that, I'm gonna make it negative, then I'm gonna raise it to the E, and then I go times 654, and I get 75.4. You can't really have a fraction of a yeast cell, um, 
you know, it's a model. So I'm going to say, so I'm still going to say 75.4. So I get about 75.4. Which makes sense, it's, it's shrinking. In four hours, it's gonna go down. So yeah, you got a number bigger than that, you get a saw, because it's gotta be going down. Okay, that was the quiz. Lots of stuff there. Um, hopefully you can understand it all and you can do similar problems. Of course, I'll change everything a little bit, but the ideas will be the same. Hopefully you can do very similar problems on the regular quiz. Um, this is really good stuff. It's really important to know how to manipulate all these things with exponents and all the rules and everything because it's going to, be going to get trickier. So you got to have this stuff down. All right. Thanks for listening to this over half hour video for those of you who did listen. So good for you. Goodbye.